Fluorescence microscopy is very important for all types of biological studies on a small scale. It works by labeling certain structures of interest in a cell with fluorescent markers. They are, for example, fluorescent molecules, and they give this very distinct shine to certain parts of the cell in the images they can observe. But you can also do something more fancy with these. You can localize them and use that to generate super resolved images, or you can find out how they oriented and get more information because of that. This orientation that's referred to as the dipole moment. And dipole moment actually has also implications on single molecule studies. Consider this. Let's put our, di uh, our dipole on the optical axis of the microscope. So we build up the optical axis, take two lenses, objective and tube lens, and we form an image. And what you can see now in a camera is a donut, not a single point. That's a bit counterintuitive, so let's try out why that is. Let's follow an electric field that we generate in two different directions. Because it's symmetric, they're pointing in different directions. And they're captured by the objective. And now we're in the back focal plane. And here you can see that the electric field is actually outward polarized. So in both cases, in light blue, the electric field is pointing outward. That means when the two electric fields combine, they interfere destructively, so you get no intensity whatsoever in the image center. If we focus on this bright ring of this donut shape, the two electric fields actually constructively interfere. So we get more signal there. That's how this shape is generated. Now, interestingly, in material science, you also use um, lasers with this special structure, this radial polarization. The difference there is you get a really tight spot that makes it very useful for material processing. But the electric field is the same. So what is happening? Why is it once a donut and once a spot? For that, we have to use vectorial uh, diffraction calculations. So not just our regular Fourier optics. Let's zoom in on the part where we actually make our image on a camera. The electric fields have to pass over the tube lens and get bent towards the focus. Now, this focus actually is um, comprised of the plane wave spectrum. So our different electric fields have still their radial components, but they also gain now a small longitudinal component, and that points in the same direction for both fields. If you have a high in A, so the rays are bent quite strongly, this component can be huge, and that gives rise to this high interference pattern in the center, in case of the spot, while we still have the donut in the other case. In effect, you have to calculate both and add them up to get the overall image intensity. And with the correct software, check out the paper in the description, you can actually do that for whatever NA you want. And you can see where the spot turns into the donut and vice versa. We can even extend that and add in the effect of the objective lens. Interestingly, it does have not much of an effect. And what is this all good for? Well, for example, in uh, microscopy, sometimes you need really small microscopes. For example, in neurosciences, you want a microscope on a mouse and look at the brain. That needs to be tiny. And the higher than A of the whole system, the smaller you can have everything. Similar in material processing, the better you know how uh, the parameters determine the beam shape, you can change the process itself. 
And there are also new types of microscopy, like oblique plane microscopy, that use high and A lenses somewhere in the middle of the beam path. More about this very cool technique in a future video. With that, I'd like to thank the, the sponsors of our video, the EU's Marie Curie Actions and the Research Council of Norway. Here's the paper again. Check it out, the link is in the description. Thank you and goodbye.